You're watching the TC MMA podcast. Now, as we jump into the main event, you got another title on the line, and this is a big one. Some people are, you know, the diehards are definitely tuning in. Some casuals are tuning in. But the bottom line is some people are going to overlook this because they're just going to be like, well, Alex Pereira is the dominant champ, one of the best in the world, if not the best. And he's facing a number eight contender. He's talking about going to heavyweight. There's all those talks. So all these things and distractions are happening. And you got to give credit to a guy like uh, Pereira for taking this fight. This guy just likes to fight. He's not like one of these champs that just holds onto the belt like a John Jones or others, and we never get to see him. And when they do fight, they're not necessarily fighting the best fighter. And then we got to wait for him to fight the best. You know, Padetta just fights everybody, man. But Daniel Cormier is saying we, what we said at the beginning. Feels like a trap game for Alex Padetta. On the Funky and the Champ podcast with Ben Askren. Remember Ben Askren, right? Former UFC fighter. He said that's a big fight. But to play advocate in Utah, we have now seen Kamaru Usman dominating Edwards and get KO'd. We've also seen Dustin Poirier, who had uh, Justin Gaethje beaten, and he gets KO'd, and Justin Gaethje becomes the BMF champ. So what he's alluding to is upsets happen in Salt Lake City. Is this upset city? Is it, is, is it going to happen? Is a number eight contender really going to come out of nowhere and beat the best fighter, potentially best fighter, arguably best fighter, probably the best fighter? They won't let him fight John Jones, right? So we don't know. But arguably the best fighter in the world. Is this really possible? I don't know. Let's get into it right now. In the light heavyweight division for the light heavyweight division title, your main event at UFC 307. You're seeing it right. Alex Pereira, 11-2, and two, takes on number eight contender, Khalil Roundtree Jr., who comes in at 14-5. and five. And he gets a big opportunity here uh, for the title. Now Pereira is three inches taller at 6'4". He's 37. Roundtree Jr. is 34, so the time is now for him if he's going to get it done. But at a two-inch reach advantage, 79 to 77, he stands right-handed. Roundtree Jr. stands left-handed. But at is more active on the feet, 5.2 significant strikes per minute to 3.8 for Roundtree. And the takedown game is really non-existent for both fighters. But Atta has been unstoppable lately, well really since coming to the light heavyweight division. He beat Jan Blahovic in his uh, debut in this division, then won the title against Yuri Prohaska, defended it against Jamal Hill, defended it again against Yuri. So he's on a four-fight win streak uh, since the Adesanya loss for the middleweight title. Now, Khalil Roundtree Jr. is on a win streak of his own. He's won five in a row against Modestus Bukowskis, KO. KO Carl Roberson beat Dustin Jacoby, but barely. He actually got outstruck in that fight 120-85. to 85. Still won by split decision, but came back and KO'd Chris Dawkins and KO'd Anthony Smith. So, you know, is he worthy of a title shot? I don't know. But the fact is, is Khalil Roundtree Jr. is getting the title shot, and of course he's going to take it. And he's going to be in the best shape of his career. He's going to bring his A game. Will any of that matter? Probably not. Alex Pereira is just dominant right now. Right? And while the rest of the division shakes out with Yuri Prohaska, Jamal Hill, Alexander Rakic, Magomed Ankalaev, Roundtree Jr. bypasses all of that and gets the opportunity. And I think he'll be at his best, but still, Alex Pereira is uh, just way better right now. I expect Alex Pereira to get the finish here by KO sometime in the first or second round. In my opinion, to move to 12-2, and two, it's that simple. Light heavyweight division. Main event for the title at UFC 307. Yeah, I just can't see it. I just can't see Padetta falling right now. I mean, I want the storylines to continue. I want him to win this fight. I want him to keep winning. I want him to keep barking up the heavyweight tree and force these guys to fight him. Because if he keeps winning, why else? All these other fighters get to move up and fight. John Jones gets to move up. Other guys have moved up as champions from one division to another. But when you bring up Alex Pereira, who's arguably, arguably the best fighter in the world right now, what do we got him? Two or three on the dude list, right? Where's he at on the dude list? Two or three? So we got him up there uh, as one of the best fighters in the world. Please believe it. Pull that thing up. 
There it is. Alex Padetta, number three on the do list, right? Hamza, one. John Jones, two. Alex Padetta, three. Islam, four. And to me, the top four is solidified. Like, it's hard for me to believe that any of those four are going to lose. And if one loses, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be shocked. Because then i got to move Shavkat up to four, which is not a bad pick either. But he's not the champ right now. Hamza's not the champ either, but he, he will be. You know, in my opinion, he will be. It's just a matter of time and getting the fights. But yeah, Alex Pettit is number three on the do list. Our third favorite fighter. We'll beat anybody. Not named Hamza Chamayev. By the time he fights John Jones, I don't know. I don't know who I'm taking in that one. I would lean towards John Jones because he's it's his division. But I would not count out Alex Pereira. But all that doesn't matter if Pereira can't win this fight. He's got to win this fight at all costs. But it's Alex Pereira. I mean, I know Adesanya beat him. But this is the light heavyweight division. This is the division that he's built for. Perfect for. And he should continue to dominate. But Khalil Roundtree has showed that he has power. He has power. And anything uh, is possible when you got power. And it's not like Alex Pereira, want, Pereira wants to take you down. The problem is, is Alex Pereira causes his opponent's problems. You know, you can't sit there and, and lollygag for 5, 10, or even 15 minutes. I mean, you got to go in for it and get it and just overwhelm Pereira and not let him sit back in that kickboxing style stance and have that lead leg on you and keep you off balance and then eventually find a way to finish you because that's what Pereira is going to try to do. But guess what? It's time, man. It's time for this fight. I know you're overlooking it. I'm probably overlooking it. We're looking at this card and being like, yeah, I mean, this is a pay-per-view event, but uh, Pereira should win. The women's fight is, is kind of interesting, but it's the women's division, and it often gets overlooked. So a lot of people are overlooking this card. And then, of course, you got Hamza on deck in, in uh, UFC 308. Everybody wants to see him fight against Whitaker. You got Ilya Topuria with Max Holloway with another opportunity. So that card's going to be huge. And we're probably overlooking this car because we want to get to 308. But at the same time, it's Salt Lake City. We've had surprises and upsets here. And anything is possible. So let's get this fight on and let's see what happens. But yeah, I think everyone on the plan everybody on the planet thinks Padet is going to win. That's just the way it is. But listen, it's been a good show. And that's a wrap. Until Saturday night, this is your boy Chris Cross. I hope you have a great day. And God bless, as always. Peace. He's gonna fight, wait, he's gonna fight, wait, hold your breath till the end of the night. Last fight a call, UFC at its height yeah. Bringing that thunder with all his might Say step up, step up, step up. wanna fight? Huh? Hold, up. Hold, up, hold up, think twice ah. Gladiator assassin, reckless, no abandon Walk through that cage, he'll leave your ass stranded